We do have a couple of international things to talk about. The biggest thing probably would be what's going on with tariffs. Uh, As you may know, we actually hiked the tariffs on China because we were involved in trade negotiations. They were supposed to actually be enacted on January 1st, but the Trump administration decided to delay the hike in taxes because there were ongoing negotiations. We were talking back and forth with them. We didn't want to go ahead and whack them with the stick until we knew that there was actually a reason for that. And so these negotiations have been going on for some time. Well, they kept getting delayed and kept getting delayed. And here we are. China has still not met the demands of the Trump administration. So at midnight last night, we hiked taxes on China. And so you can understand how significant this is. Chinese goods are currently taxed at a rate of about 10%. They just got boosted to 25 So 150% increase. This is nothing to sneeze at. You're seeing now 25% uh, tariff on goods. And the reason this is so important is because China is one of the countries we import the most from. You're looking at things that uh, are especially typically produced in China. You're looking at things like bikes. That's one thing. And another thing that you're really looking at is textile industry. And one of the things that I'm very concerned about is this is going to especially hit hard if you're thinking about buying new clothes for the summer, buying new clothes for your kids. I mean, you're going to be looking at t-shirt prices at Walmart. A a t-shirt that used to be seven, eight bucks is now going to be about 20. I mean, that's a a bit of an exaggeration since it's 25% tax hike. You're probably going to see them be about more, more like 10 or 12. But the point is you add that up. And that happens to several different items of clothing when you throw them in your cart. Boy, it adds up to an awful lot, especially if you've got a larger family. And so this is really going to be something that hits the average person hard. This is going to be about $2 billion worth in taxation. So a huge, huge tax spike and not something that is going to be doing well. uh, Not something that is, is going to be taken lightly by American families. Now, let's look at this and look at the the rationale behind it and everything to try to fully understand how we got here. Apparently, what was going on and the reason that we finally decided to stop delaying on tax uh, tariffs and actually put those taxes forward is primarily because China apparently had backed out of some agreements. So this is sort of the running narrative right now, and I have no reason to disbelieve it, but the way that it goes, the way that the sort of estimation is right now, based on the little information that we have, a lot of these conversations, of course, take place behind closed doors, and so we don't have perfect information on it. But based on what we know, we think that probably what happened is that China had more or less agreed to a lot of the demands, maybe not all of them, but there was a deal more or less on the table. And then in the 11th hour, China decided, uh, yeah, we're going to not do that anymore. And part of that is because of the way that the president responded to it. We've also got some inside sources from those that were engaged specifically in those talks that kind of suggest that we were making a lot of progress and, and that we were close to a deal the past couple of weeks. And then all of a sudden, everything seems to be off the table which is highly suspicious, and that would lead people to believe that the Chinese were more or less on board with everything up until really about a day or two ago where they decided, yeah, we're not going to go a- along with that deal that had been had been put on the table. So that's probably what happened, that we were right on the cusp of a deal, and they decided to weasel out at the last second, which I guess is their prerogative to do. There's no rule against it, obviously. But the question is, why did that take place? Well, a lot of people are wondering if this is a sheerly political move by President Xi, or as I like to call him, President 11, because it's XI. So President 11, I think that what's going on with him is that a lot of people have talked about how it's interesting that President Xi and and President Trump are together on this and they seem to be having problems and they seem to be constantly knocking heads on trade because they have very similar personalities. In other words, President Xi specifically sees himself as very much a tough guy and somebody that fights for the average working people of China, and Trump kind of sees himself in a similar light. 
And so because their tough guy image is very important to both of them, and I'm really not trying to dumb this down or say that that's the only reason, but they're saying that that may be a contributing factor to the reason that President Xi is saying, well, we don't want to give too much away, not because it would hurt his economy, but primarily because it would hurt his image. It would make him look weak on the world stage. And that's something that we know that Donald Trump is very much averse to as well, which would explain part of the reason why they may be having some troubles reach, uh, some trouble reaching some deals. I'm not saying that that's the only factor. We don't have any in inside information that suggests that. I'm just saying, based on the characters that are in play, and based on the way things seem to fall apart at the last minute, something probably happened there. That's the best estimation that we can give right now. But the market really has been incredibly good. I mean, incredibly good. And it's just such a shame that we're having to deal with all this and the market has is, is really been taking a plunge, the stock market. Luckily, it did make a lot of recovery today back to almost where it started, but it took a nosedive this morning. And people were very concerned that something that, that was that drastic when the stock, uh, the stock market opened this morning. They were really concerned. Luckily, it made a bounce back and it got pretty close to where it was when it opened. But it was scary there for a second. And because of that, we're not really sure. There's some, some questions about that, but it's just such a shame because this economy is really good. I mean, the economy has been sailing smoothly for a while, and having a 15% tariff hike on one of our biggest trade partners is no small matter when it comes to how well the economy is doing. Granted, some of the really good numbers recently may have actually been because people were buying up in anticipation of the tariffs. In other words, they're saying the economy is going to take a hit if these tariffs actually go through. We better go ahead and hedge our bets and go ahead and buy more than we normally would to kind of prepare for the rainy day that we think might be coming. That's certainly possible. I don't think that it is economically unfeasible to believe that that's part of what was going on. But it wouldn't explain everything else that happened before the talks about tariffs were even happening. And so I do think that at least part of the recent, and I would say recent the past few months, some of the recent spending that you've been seeing is in part because people were worried about tariffs and so they're, they're going ahead and sort of buying now so that they won't lose money later. That could certainly be part of the reason that we're seeing some of these good numbers. But just to give you kind of an idea of where Trump himself and the Trump administration seems to stand right now on tariffs and the likelihood of this continuing, honestly, based on some of Trump's tweets, it's not looking super optimistic. Here was the first one that he sent out today. Talks with China continue in a very congenial manner. There's absolutely no need to rush as tariffs are now being paid to the United States by China of 25% on $250 billion worth of goods and products. These massive payments go directly to the treasury of the U.S. All right, so there's a couple things that we need to unpack here. First of all, the main thing that everybody is worried about is right here, there's no need to rush. And the reason that is scary for some people is because they're saying, well, there's no need to rush, which would mean that these negotiations could go on for a really long time. And if the negotiations go on for a really long time, the tariffs would last for a really long time. And by the way, we have already seen China ratcheting up its threats for increasing tariffs on us. There was that whole back and forth that happened, I think, earlier last year where uh, Trump was saying, well, we're going to raise them 15. And then China was like, well, we're going to raise them more than that. And, and again, it was sort of a microcosm of what always happens in these trade wars, which is nobody ever actually wins a trade war. There's just casualties of consumers that get taxed to death. That's the only thing that ever happens with this. Because once one country enacts taxes, then the other country enacts more taxes. And then before you know it, you're somewhere in the 35, 40 percentile range on tariffs and everybody has more expensive stuff. It's a really terrible way to try to run an economy. And that's the reason that there's nobody that ever actually wins a trade war. 
But nonetheless, that's what's going on. And, and that kind of brings me to the second point here, where he's saying that this money is going directly into the United States Department of Treasury. Well, yes, but you're not answering the question of where it comes from. You see, on tax day, April 15th, and whenever, you know, beforehand you weird people that do it before April 15th, uh, that, that do your taxes, well, that money goes right into the U.S. Treasury, too. The question is, where does it come from? Like, whether or not we're going to say money in the U.S. Treasury is a good thing largely depends on where that money came from. If it came from the American people, then money flowing into the Treasury Department is not a good thing, and that's exactly what happens in tariffs. Yes, they are taxing the imports themselves, but where does that cost go? Inevitably, just like every other business tax, the consumer is the one that pays for it. If you were to put a 20% tax on ice cream tomorrow and you were just going to tax all of the ice cream vendors, and I just use ice cream because I really want some ice cream right now, but if you, if you were to just decide to tax, we're going to tax ice cream vendors, and every time they sell a, a cone, we get 20% of that. Do you really think the ice cream vendor is going to go, darn, guess I got to pay 20% and take that out of my pocket every time I sell an ice cream cone? No. And the Chinese are exactly the same way, or every other country, they're exactly the same way. When all of a sudden that happens, they're going to charge 20% more for their product. They're not going to pay for it. The consumer is going to pay for it. And so tariffs, like all taxes levied by the U.S. government, are a tax on the U.S. citizen, not the country. So yeah, there is money pouring into the U.S. Treasury coffers, but that's a tax increase on Americans. And so this is why it's so incredibly disingenuous. It's a sneaky way to increase taxes. Look, with President Trump, I'm really grateful for the tax cut that we got. I just credited that tax cut to a lot of the success that the economy has been experiencing, and I stand behind that claim. But if you cut taxes in this area only to increase taxes in this area, then what good did the tax cuts do? You're going to undo all of the progress that your administration has made. And that's really the problem that we're running into and the reason that the markets are really worried about this because he's saying, ah, it may last a while, we may have taxes, we may have these extra tariffs for a really, really long time. Think about it from your own personal perspective. To understand why this is so detrimental to a market, take it from your own personal finances. If you were to find out tomorrow, let's say that you're married, have a couple kids, and you have a wife, and she has a job, and it's a good job, and it's it pays good, but you know that you would really struggle to support your family and to support your current lifestyle if you had to depend on just her income. Well, let's say that you got notice from your employer, we may have to downsize. And we don't think that you'll lose your job. I wouldn't rule that out as a possibility, but there's at least a chance that something's going to happen, like we have to do a, a cut in pay or something like that. We don't know. We'll let you know in a little while. Okay, well, if that happens, you are not going to make any big purchases. If you've got this imaginary sword of Damocles sort of circling above your head, and you have no idea whether or not it's going to fall, well, then you react differently. And if that happens, you probably still, you know, you probably still go out and, and spend money to a degree, but you're certainly not going to make a lot of life-altering purchases. You're not going to buy a house. You're not going to buy a car. You're basically going to stick to the necessities and anything that you were thinking about purchasing, anything that was a big ticket item or anything that was going to cost a lot of money. Maybe you were thinking about having another kid well, let's hold off on that until we find out what our finances are going to look like. Markets do exactly the same thing. When you're running a business, you may be dealing with millions or even billions of dollars in a business deal, but the concerns are exactly the same. If all of a sudden you make a product and your product relies heavily on a product that is made in China, then you're not going to be somebody that makes a whole lot of investments or spends a lot of money in R&D because you're still trying to figure out what your expenses are going to be tomorrow. It's the same reason that regulation was such a problem in the Obama administration, because people didn't know, based on the regulation and the new federal 
mandates that were going to come down on top of them, they had no idea whether their cost of production was going to be increased by 20% tomorrow or not. There was so much new regulation coming out every single day that the markets were completely volatile and uncertain, and markets despise uncertainty for exactly that reason, for exactly the psychological reason I just laid out. It's not wise to spend a lot of money in a market that you don't know what it's going to be like tomorrow. And that's the reason that you saw this massive dip in the stock market. It's the same reason that people are really hesitant to make a lot of investments and spend a lot of money in research and development, thinking about launching a new product line. You're less likely to incur risk, and money is made when risk is incurred. You're a lot less likely to incur risk when the market is uncertain. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, 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 it's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.